this is going to date me a little bit, but back in the day when we rented VHS tapes, there was a sticker on it that said, be kind and rewind. For those of us making tutorials, be kind and fast forward. So what I've got on my timeline is a screen recording. And before I'm going to walk people through how to blur out certain things in Snagit, I'm going to actually show them what it looks like. And I'm going to take, I'm going to fast forward, if you will, the thing that I was going to show them at the end, I'm going to show them that in the first couple of seconds. That way they don't have to waste two minutes or two hours trying to figure out whether or not this tutorial is worth their time. Be kind to your users, show them up front what you're going to show them, and then let them decide whether or not to continue on understanding the how in the process. So I've got my screen recording here, and the way that I've uh, focused their attention in the first couple of seconds, as you just saw, was I zoomed in into a couple of key areas, right? I called out, if you will, the uh, icon up at the top and then the area of activity in the bottom both of them sort of go zoop like that and then I connect dots with uh, this connecting line here at the bottom so I got the connecting line the big bottom ring and uh, the top ring now each of these elements like the top ring let me just highlight uh, that in and of itself so I can uh, well no, actually there we go so let me zoom in here and you'll see that this animation grows from the actual icon itself or or thereabouts right zoom in one more time and it grows out that takes a trick so let me show you the trick All right, so let me break it down. I'm going to go down the timeline a little bit and just take a look at this piece here. So what I've got is I've got my recording. I also have a frame from the recording. That's kind of my background. Uh, I've got the recording. I've got a, a shape, which is uh, this green circle, which I'm going to use to make a, uh, a track map. And uh, for simplicity's sake, let's just... Uh, turn off some things and we're just going to focus on the recording and that shape and I'll right click to choose uh, the alpha track mat if track mats are new to you we do have a whole uh, series of videos about track matting and uh, I'm going to choose alpha and that is going to reveal what was underneath alpha reveals alpha invert conceals so I'm going to reveal what is underneath that shape which is just that little bit right there and then if I wanted to, I could also uh, show you the uh, circle shape that I put around there, right? So relatively simple, good. We've got those three elements here. I'm going to uh, Command G on Mac, uh, Windows G on Windows, and uh, whoops, and then I'll turn off that uh, track mat above. So I've got a group, right? And uh, just for simplicity's sake, let me rename that group, and I'm gonna call this one uh, my top circle. Uh, with uh, a video okay cool uh, and then to give it context I'm gonna show the frame behind it uh, so you can kind of see where it is as we mentioned before we wanted the animations to sort of grow out of this position so if I were to uh, hit shift a which adds a custom animation and then uh, let me show you the uh, properties over here on the right hand side I might think okay cool let's scale it up oh wait let's scale it back oh yep oh whoa okay so you can see if I zoom out here you can see that the animation is scaling up and down from the middle of the screen that group that we created this group called top circle with a video uh, has an anchor right here in the middle I'm gonna reset this uh, by hitting uh, reset scale to default that brings everything back to a hundred percent I'm also just going to click on my animation get rid of my animation All right now I've deleted that animation and I've just got the grouping so there's a two-step process to change the anchor the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the crop mode 
and I shall crop around the screen that I want to focus my uh, group size to, if you will. I can also zoom in on the timeline and there we go. That's pretty close. Cool. Now that in and of itself is not enough. It's a first step. The second step is I go back to that very same group and I command G one more time. It renames it, so that's fine. I'll call this one again um, uh, top content with uh, video and uh, new anchor. Hope I can spell. Cool. Then you'll notice here, by the way, now that I've grouped that the second time, that second time now has the uh, the anchor in the middle. So watch as I scale this up and down. Now with it small, I can see where the anchor point is and I might just use my arrow keys to get it in the right space. If I also need a little bit of help, I can sort of turn on and off the transparency because uh, that might help me to uh, just get it in the right spot. All right, now with that in place, uh, I hit the Shift A, and uh, from here I can then scale it up as big as I want, and then if I choose to, sure, I can actually um, bring it a little off center as I wish. But here we've got the whoop, and we're able to grow that up. All right. All right, so here's the challenge for you. I want you to take this animation, which I've created, and then I want you to back it out. I want you to reverse the animations. I don't just want those circles to grow up and that line to ex to extend. I want you to make it go backwards. I want them to shrink at the end and I want the line to disappear at the end. That'll give you a good uh, opportunity to explore track matting and the animations together. All of this is gonna make you one heck of a great Camtasia video editor and animator. Thank you so much for watching these. I hope they're as fun for you to, uh, to learn from as they are for me to make. God bless you. Have yourself a great day.